Hey buddy, watch this. Hello, hello, Regis Kilman is the name, and Hearthstone is the game, and this is a deck spotlight on a Nazoth Control Warrior created by the famous warrior player and ladder warrior of sorts, Fibonacci. Uh, he's always in the top 100 playing warrior, so he knows the class in and out, and this is a version of warrior that he's playing right now. Uh, most notably, it's not a dragon warrior or a Cthulhu warrior, which are the two most prominent archetypes by far. This is, uh, the harkens back essentially more to an old school control warrior list, of course, with some modern day inclusions, particularly the Nazoth, the Corruptor combo, as you might expect from the name. In other words, it features a few extra death rattle minions, particularly a couple here with Taunt and Infested Torin that allow you to play uh, Nazoth the Corruptor as a, a finisher, a, a board reset, all kinds of stuff that just allows you to uh, recover in the late game and present a threat that essentially just tries to win you the game. So uh, there are obviously a lot of standard control warrior pieces, all the execute shield slams, the axes, the armor ups, all of that stuff is here. Uh, there's also uh, some interesting AoE effects like double revenge, which uh, whirlwind effects are particularly strong right now, and three damage whirlwind effects are even better against classes like shaman in particular with a lot of three health stuff if they get off to a great start. Uh, having a couple of revenges to reset the board is pretty amazing. Of course, you've also got double brawls for area of effect removal. And uh, just high value removal like Gorehouse and finishers with Grom. But really, only the, way to, the only way to activate Grom is with a revenge. So that's not super flexible, but still sometimes we'll just win you the game. And uh, there's an Elise thrown in as well, just to make some of these other cards that you might draw in the late game more valuable if you save them and you're able to uh, pull off the full... Elise Cycle. Uh, one really interesting inclusion in this deck is actually Tink Master Overspark. This is a card you almost never see, uh, but it has some very interesting applications as a removal card, particularly against other Cthulhu Warriors. It can be really challenging uh, to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Cthulhu Warrior who's able to play Cthulhu, and then say you Shield Slam it or execute it, and then they play a Doom Caller and they get a second Cthulhu, and they play another Doom Call, and they get a third Cthulhu. Uh, say they get a Brand, they get a fourth Cthulhu. Uh, there are, uh, there's just no way to kill that many Cthulhu's in this deck when you have to use your removal on other things, but that first time Cthulhu comes down, if you're able to play Tink Master Overspark, and turn it into a Devil Sword or Squirrel, then it will kill that Doom Caller effect, right? The Doom Caller will no longer bring back your uh, Cthulhu, because you didn't kill the Cthulhu, you transformed it. So it will break that uh, interaction and leave those Cthulhu Warriors without a lot of the late, late game value that they're expecting to have, which can give you a huge advantage. Team Master's also just good against stuff like Ragnaros. Um, those are the kinds of minions, Cthulhu and Ragnaros, that tend to get played on an empty board, and uh, he's guaranteed to hit them if there's only one other minion out there. And of course, you'd rather have a 5 5 double sword than a Ragnaros staring you down. So, a lot of value packed into. Um, just a three mana card, right? So pretty interesting tech inclusion along with the tech of Harrison Jones because there's just so many weapon classes out there these days. So all of this creates a very competitive list that has been played up to the top 10 of the Legend Ladder in this season. And I want to see it in action. I don't know about you guys, but let's go ahead and take the Nazoth Control Warrior by Fibonacci out onto the rank ladder to see just how it performs. I have a feeling it's going to perform pretty well. I like control style warrior decks and uh, I think this is a good one. So we'll see how to mulligan. We'll learn about some gameplay lines and strategies, how to manage our resources in particular can be a challenge. And also uh, making sure you don't go too early with your Nazoth turn against certain classes that might have uh, board resets like Brawl or Twisting Nether and that kind of stuff. So we'll, we'll assume that this is Zoo. It, it could still be a, you know, Rena Lock or something of the sort, a control style Warlock. But most likely it's Zoo and both Revenge and Fire War actually are very powerful against Zoo. So we'll keep those in the Mulligan. Bash is fantastic as well. So uh, we have a pretty great hand here. Even Shield Slam is fine with a bash. If it's an aggressive deck, I mean, you can use this on pretty low value targets. Definitely looks like uh, looks like Zoo so far. Elise is actually good too, just because she's an early drop that'll help us keep up. 
Um, I'm actually not going to use the weapon on that. I want to use it on something with more health. This only gets punished by acidic swamp ooze, right? It's very unlikely. Ugh. So I can attack in revenge. It leaves out um, two one ones, but it feels a little early for the revenge, to tell you the truth. Um, I could attack now, as well. Uh, just it would give him one extra power on the board, but it sets up for another revenge next turn. That could be even better. Um, could also just bash now and just go ahead and attack the possessed villager to uh, to get the maximum number of one ones out. But I think that does signal my uh, my plans a little bit. I'm gonna do something unusual and just armor up. It's only three power on board, right? It's not that scary. I can play Elise and hopefully get a better trade with this Firewax next turn. It's punished by another um, Imp King boss, I guess. But that doesn't seem super likely. Uh, we could even bash uh, Shield Slam something like a Councilman. Or, you know, figure out another... Oh my gosh, we're rewarded! Our greed is rewarded. I do kind of wish I'd activated the, uh, the Possessed Villager. But, uh, well, I can, uh, I can slam attack. It just gives me a free slam, basically. Slam the Imp King boss. Attack the Imp King boss. We'll be left with just a 1-1. One -one. I kind of like this. Second Fireworks is good. We can't use it just yet, but... We didn't totally clear the board, but uh, we definitely mitigated something like Defender of Argus's value. Still have a good Elise play. Or still this combo is nice. Direwolf will just kill. That's totally fine. That positioning is a little off, but... Oh, well that makes more sense. Um, Do we want to bash or do we just play Elise? I think we just play Elise. She trades relatively well into the board. So, and he just used some trading up mechanisms, right? Between the direwolf and the abusive. He may not trade up into this very well. So, uh, The one thing we don't have a ton of right now is life gain. And um, we're at 20, so that's a little scary. We can bash that guy. Scormok trades pretty good. Uh, we may have to leave this up a little while. Uh, actually, we can just... Uh, ooh. I think this makes our life a lot easier. We'll have to leave up the Imp Gang boss, but we can kill the Gormok and, uh, hmm, let's think about this though. We can also Fire War Axe, Bash, Shield Slam. Hmm. The math does, we only have three armor though, so the Shield Slam wouldn't really work very well on anything. I think I'll just go ahead and bash this and uh, play the Ravaging Ghoul. It kills two things. It kills the Divine Shield. It leaves up the Flame Imp for a pretty good trade. But uh, if he's trading, that's that's actually fine. I don't really mind. This takes off the best minion, right? So gives me some armor back. Uh, he can trade, we can axe Loot Hoarder, we can also probably Shield Slam next turn because I don't think he's going to do a ton of damage to us. We might be able to do like a 4 health Shield Slam. It's good against everything, but uh... Well those don't go together very well. <laughs> oh, Shield Block Shield Slam is pretty fantastic. I think we actually want to sh Shield Slam the Bran and not the Darkshire. The Darkshire is just less likely to give him value. Um, Let's just see what we get off the shield block. Festa Torrent's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and shield slam the uh, the brand here. And uh, I'll go ahead and attack this. Mostly to set up the trade with the Torrent next turn. Uh, if it doesn't get buffed a lot, I'll probably just kill it as well. That's a possibility too. And we have a good 8 mana play here. 6 and 2 for the hero power. So we're in a good spot. Um, I could just shield slam again to save a lot of life. I could just play Grom. Just uh, kill the uh, the wolf and attack here. I think that's maybe just better. Grom is uh, very annoying for Zoo to deal with. 
at seven health. So it can trade into pretty much anything. He might have Doom Guards, but even those don't trade very well. I'm glad we did this so we can kill the Sea Giant easily. Um, not super thrilled about killing my Grom, but otherwise we wouldn't have had an answer for that. Uh, so that worked out pretty well, and I'll just uh, double taunt here. No need to shield slam, of course, because we don't have armor. Glad we grommed there. That sea giant was going to be a pain. Without an execute in particular. I mean, we haven't drawn enough cards. We need to get this loot order out to draw some cards. That's fine. This might be Doom Guard, though. Nope. That's good. Oh, man. Bad trades all around. Jeez. Uh, that's good just because it's card cycle. I don't really care about the monkey, probably, but... Oh, well. Um... Shoot, I guess it doesn't get any better than two legendaries, right? I'm a little scared to lose removal, but by god. I don't know. <laughs> I, I think the legendaries will help me keep up. And the 6-6 six, six taunt is just insane against Zeus, so whatever. Oh shoot, we even got a, a minion. Cool. That's good too. I don't mind him drawing cards really, because um, I want the body primarily. And he didn't draw a card, so that was probably the only turn it mattered that he drew a card anyway. Aviana's pretty sick with legendaries. Like, we're probably gonna get to play two legendaries next turn. Elise, man, you, you paid out fast. I've never seen that before. Uh, he's gonna be able to kill the monkey, but his board is in shambles after that. Well, this ain't a bad turn against Zoo. <laughs> oh, I dig it, dude. I dig it. Just a one mana 5 9 that you can't kill. No big deal. No big deal. <laughs> I, uh, props on him for playing this out, because uh, this game is, is drastically over already. I mean, just absurdly over. Shoot, why not? Why not play the one mana Yashiraj? Um. Yeah, I think he saw the. <laughs> I think he saw the the writing of the writing on the wall there. That was fun. Yeah, when you get a start like that against Zoo, I mean, it, it's impossible, right, to lose. I mean, we had just crazy hand, crazy hand. Yeah, fireworks, bash, revenge, and even Elise on four is good because this deck doesn't have any early minions. <laughs> Other than Loot Hoarder. We even have the Loot Hoarder too, so didn't even have time to play it because our game was so good. Okay, Shaman will be a more interesting challenge. Uh, this is a pretty good hand though. I'm even going to keep the Execute, I think, just for um, Flame Wreath Faceless value. So the Firewalk should help me keep up. Harrison's fine against Doomhammer if they run it. Not everybody runs it, but it's certainly a possibility. So uh, I'm happy with this hand. I mean, this deck is a slave to mulligans in many ways, but it's not that bad just because you have Ravaging Ghouls, you have Infested Torrents, like, there's stuff you can do. I mean, there's a high likelihood that you can draw stuff that you can do in the mulligan. You're not usually going to be left with, like, a crazy hand. In other words, it's not Cthulhu, two Doom Callers, and two Ancient Shield Bearers, right? It's very unlikely to draw into unplayable cards, because most of your curve is, is below six. Um, that's actually kind of annoying. I'm gonna go ahead and attack. Uh, this signals the Ravaging Ghoul to him. Uh, but that's okay. He'll probably just totem. If it's the 1-1 totem, we're in really good shape. Probably have to use... Um, I don't even have to Ravaging Ghoul. I could just save the weapon charge. Just do damage to that. I don't really care. I have the other Ravaging Ghoul to set up the Execute, so even if he uh, Flame Wreaths here, I can just blow him out. Totem is not quite as efficient, but... Oh, well. Oh, he's going to trade with the Rock Rider. Ravaging Ghoul still, still feels pretty good. The question is, do I... Well, I have Bash as an Execute Activator. 
So I don't really mind. But is it worth it? I don't even know if it's worth it. I'll just kill two totems. I'm gonna have to weapon this anyway. So maybe I just play the Torrent instead. It's Torrent's bad against Flame Tongue, but not even that bad, right? I mean, it trades evenly. Then I can bash the Flame Tongue. I want my Death Rattles to die anyway, eventually. Let's try this. Let's try this. Uh, next turn we can Harrison if somehow he plays Doomhammer. There's the Flame Tongue we talked about. It's gonna Rock Biter first and then trade in the Wrath of Air, it looks like. All totems, all totems. So we can still just bash this. Um, could even bash Ravaging Ghoul just to get rid of that, but I don't think it's worth it. We'll just hero power. Hero powers are good. We need life. Um, we can Ravaging Ghoul execute something big. Uh, maybe even pull off Shield Slam because I don't think he's going to do a ton of damage to us. One Rock Biter's down, which is good because that mitigates some burst damage we can take. Uh, we can Shield Slam that, I think, right? No, we won't be able to, actually. Shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Go to three. I can probably just execute it, though. I think that's fine. Uh, I'll have time to build up some armor here for a future Shield Slam target. Most likely. Need to be able to get to 7, though. Well, we can Gore Howl a uh, Flame Wreath Faceless. You don't feel great about taking 7 damage, but uh, this doesn't look like a Burst Shaman. That's annoying. I need to be able to Shield Slam that. No, I can just Gore Howl it again. That's even a better Gore Howl target, honestly. That's fine. Only 3. So our hand's a little wonky, right? Like, this is not the best hand right now. You can trade here. Gorhal's insane value, but we don't have a ton of life gain, and um, these shield slams are not great when you're hitting stuff with Gorhal every time. Uh, can we get to 12? I want to be able to attack this to get to 12, right? <laughs> like, I can get to 12... But I'll end up killing my own Ravaging Ghoul because of these taunts. This hand is really bad. I can only Shield Slam for two. God, Team Master is not a good draw either. Because I might transform these into five fives. See, I want a revenge, but it kills my own minion. Is the problem, right? Um, I want to take. I want to hit one of these, go down to twelve, revenge, and then trade in. But that's not actually possible. I can clear the board. Don't get me wrong. Just it feels kind of dumb. I think I'm just gonna play the Tink Master here as a naked Tink Master. Um, just to have some board presence. It, it totally sucks, but I don't know that it'll ever need to hit a target. I can't Shield Slam a Flame Wreath. I can tank a Flame Wreath, but I'm glad this worked out so far. You might Rock Biter this, whatever. That's fine. Oh, Shield Slam would be the best draw on the... I mean, Shield Block would be the best. Slam is a start. I still can't, I can't get high enough to uh, sh to uh, shield slam it. I may have to go ahead and tank that, but by God, that's scary. I'm going to shield slam this, though. Otherwise, I'm very scared about being dead. And uh, try to play this to stay alive. He's down to two cards. I'm at nine health, uh, which is super scary. Just a card would be a good draw. Shield blocks anything that keeps me alive basically even him playing Doomhammer would be a dream uh, it's a lot of damage but Harrison would just rock its world so and get me back into the game for card draw he hexed my infested torrent 
So that's where we've... Oh, that's probably good. It's not actually that good because I can't activate it, but by God, <laughs> we'll, we'll make it work. We can kill the uh, thing from below at the very least. Um, but I go down to six health. The question is, do I, do I use the Tink in my face? Do I use the Grom in the Tink? And save some health and just kill the Searing Totem instead? I think I can just use the Grom and the Tink Master. He just hexed, right? This, if this thing had four health or I had five attack, this world would be such a better place. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use my face. I think having the minion out could be very relevant to clearing. Um, and I don't think he can do six damage from hand with one card. Uh, lava Burst doesn't even kill me, right? Because this has to go through the taunt. I just need a life gain card. I'm glad I kept this alive. It's going to be able to kill a minion I otherwise couldn't have killed. <sighs> That's like the worst draw of my deck. Because I don't need that. Um, I can't clear the board to keep Grom alive, I feel like. Because he's going to take enough damage regardless. But I got to kill this. Clearly, it's it's too much value. Um, I, I could use uh, Tink Master in my face, but I would go down to 5 health, and Lava Burst would kill me then. I'd rather just Grom eat a, eat a hit here, you know? Um, I have to play the Harrison, even though I'd love to draw cards off of it. Uh, should I Fiery War Axe or not is a good question, right? Um, this is down to two. It kills totems. But I may need the mana next turn to do other stuff. But I have the coin, so I don't really think so. I'll just try to get the max value out of this. I really just want some life gain. Like, this is so scary. I can't, I don't think I can tank that, right? Like, like I, I think I have to. Oh! Oh, thank God. So now I'll definitely play the axe, because the 1-1 one, one is totally useless. Um, kills one totem and that's it. So we've navigated this entire game without using the coin. I don't, he must have tracked that this is the coin by now, because uh, he knows he wasn't on the coin and we haven't used it yet. So he may have forgotten, but it's not going to be relevant drawing one card at a time. I mean, that looks like a bad draw, because it doesn't do anything, but it's actually... It's moving me through the deck and challenging that Divine Shield, so by God I'll take it. Plus, he had a bad draw too, so we're at least uh, generating armor. We're back up to a life total that's halfway reasonable. It's a pretty good draw for him. Pretty good draw. Slam is not super helpful. Slam executes a little better since we've seen both flame wreaths. Slam execute Cairn is, is actually totally fine, and we'll just go ahead and coin out the, uh, the Euro Power. As long as he doesn't have Hex, but he's drawn two cards, so it's very possible he Hexes. It sucks, but... Uh, our top deck should be better than his top decks at the very least. He has another fire elemental, I guess, that'd be pretty tough to deal with. <sighs> that Harrison actually sucked a lot. Not not really for losing the weapon, I mean, that was important, but drawing the card is... Oh god, we gotta kill that. That's actually more important than the Ezra Drake. Thank god he didn't get a Taunt Totem. He can't outdraw me right now, I'll just lose the game. Well, he already is, right, but... Sylvanas is about as fine as it gets. I'm not thrilled about leaving the the uh, attack damage here out and the spell damage. But again, the, the mana tide is the card that just loses you the game for sure. I'd love to see a brawl. How good would brawl be right now off the top? Because Sylvanas will steal whatever wins and will have the leftover Cairn. Um, even the Zoth right now wouldn't be that helpful because... Well, I guess it summoned two taunts. That'd be totally fine. Whoa, he just gave me a chance to steal. I guess that's what he wants, but... No, he gave me a steal now. I can steal... I have a good chance to steal something valuable. Is he going to trade in to steal? 
I don't think he should. It. Oh no, you're giving me a better chance to something good by killing that minion off. I'll take it, dude. That's worth, super worth, because it sets up the Azure Drake trade. I asked for it and I got it, but now I don't even know if it's good. I think I'm gonna wait. Because I'm ahead on board right now. There's no reason to brawl. We can wait till he plays something of value and try to try to get a totem to win. Because he's going to kill my Cairn. This is a better brawl even right now. He's not going to kill my... Oh, he is. It looked like that was going face. <laughs> okay. Uh, shield block's a fantastic draw. Revenge clears his board. I think I'd do it. Save the brawl for a future turn. Just in case. This is my out right now. But Nazoth would just be a ridiculous draw. As soon as I get Nazoth, the game is over. Because I bring back two taunts. I bring back a Cairn, a Sylvanas. Like, come on, it's one in five. Can't draw Nazoth now. Justicar is totally fine, though. Contests the minion and puts my health even farther out of range on future turns. It's a little unfortunate the mana didn't line up, but... Uh, there, I don't think there's a way we lose now. Maybe Fire Elemental into this is really good. <sighs> I could probably just brawl this. Well, yeah. Uh, I can go ahead and trade to make my chance to win slightly better. And make the chance that a bad totem wins more likely. Yeah, that's fine. Whatever. We killed a couple dudes. I'll take it. He's down to five cards total. We have uh, three cards total, but that's Elise and Nazoth. <laughs> so, uh, we're going to get a legendary this turn, no matter what. Okay. Cool. This actually does um, reduce my chance of drawing Nazoth, I guess, by a turn. So... I don't even know if I can play the monkey until after Nazoth is down. So the brawl might be the only thing that turns into a legendary. I may even play that this turn, depending on what he plays. Does he have to trade? Does he have to go face? I think he has to go face, but I think that means I can just brawl. Or, let's, if we get Nazoth, we'll just Nazoth, of course. But um, So this will draw me into Nazoth, but I won't have the mana. So I guess I'll brawl. Well, this might draw me into the monkey. Yeah, it draws me into Nazoth. Um... He has three total cards left. He hasn't been playing this. I think it's Lightning Storm. Um, or it might have been that Flame Tongue Totem, actually. I don't know. Yeah, I'll just Brawl, because I know I'm going to Nazoth next turn, so I won't have the mana to Brawl next turn. And that last card's going to be the Monkey, but I won't have any Legendaries, so it's just going to be a 6-6 a six, six Taunt, which actually is pretty sick. So he won the best one, but it's still just a one-attack minion. Unless that's double elemental destruction, this game is locked up. It's impossible to lose from here. That won't even help. He can't kill me fast enough to get through all this junk. So yeah, we definitely like Nazoth better than some random legendary from the monkey. Thought we had... Oh, he hexed a Torin, so we only have one Torin. Okay, that makes sense. Hex on the Sylvanas, I like it. That's right. This is actually a liability right now. But uh, there's just no way. Oh, he did have the lightning storm. Boom. So um, he actually needs to trade into this slime, I think, with the tunnel strong. But he's out of cards, so. Um, oh, that's a weird trade. So we'll just go ahead and kill this. Um, Kill this guy, and uh, I probably should have done it the other way around, just to maximize the amount of damage I'm putting out per turn. I was thinking about the health, but technically I'd rather have damage than health. But he has uh, no way to get through this, and uh, we'll just hit him for 10 every turn, basically, and win. And Zoth clearly won us that game. He even had the good lightning storm for it, but uh, just too much value, right? Just crazy value. It was a great game. It was a tough game. Shamans are tough sometimes. Obviously. 
But uh, we we uh, even though we had a pretty awkward hand in the mid game, we we drew some timely stuff right. Like that bash was really good against that flame with faceless. Uh, we had the brawls when we needed them. We were able to keep up until then. So um, this is probably zoo again. Uh, I don't love this hand. I think I'm going to keep the Tauren and hard mulligan for the fiery war axe. Otherwise, uh, still not great. The ghoul's good though. I like to see the ghoul. Shield block's fine, just stall and stall and draw. Stall and draw. Whoa, that's not an optimized zoo play. You don't see that every day. Um, do we just go ahead and slam that? I think so. Uh, we're not at risk of running out of cards just because we have a lot of higher curve stuff. Like, we'll have the Cairn and the Tauren. And, uh, that's a, a pretty high value minion to get rid of, so... Uh, could just go ahead and coin out the Elise. It's not the best trading minion here, but uh, we have another four drop to follow up, and it trades better than the Torin does. So let's just go ahead and get the body out there. I don't really care about the monkey so much as the body. Uh, revenge is good when you know there's an Imp King boss. If you like Forbidden Rituals, we'll just like trade revenge. Go nuts. He might uh, like uh, doing the work for me. I dig it. Thanks. Oh, well, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That makes Ravaging Ghoul much worse. Uh, makes Execute pretty good, though. Yeah, let's just Execute, uh... Shield Block. Let's Shield Block first. And then we'll just Execute and trade. Execute, of course, doesn't activate the Imps, which is pretty cool, so it's really good on Imp Gang Boss. Uh, of course, we might want it on a Sea Giant later, too, and we'll regret that, but we'll figure that out when the time comes, right? With Zoo, you need to contest the board as it sits, not worry too much about the future. That's pretty good. Puts this out of range. Uh, Ravaging Ghoul will clean it up, but I don't really have much of a turn to follow. Uh, I guess I can just Ravaging Ghoul armor up. It's not the best Ravaging Ghoul against Zoo, but uh, it's on curve. Revenge is still just as bad and could be better later if he gets a good run here and puts me down. This does set up a trade with a better minion here. It leaves the Defender Vargas. Uh, but we can Cairn next turn, or True Heart maybe, but probably Cairn, just because it trades better. Save True Heart for like turn 8 or something, because we're not going to be armoring up anyway. So getting here out early, even though that is usually advantageous, won't be as advantageous in this instance. That's a good play, because he sets up a good trade. Uh, I could just Shield Slam and Torrent. Yeah. The Shield Slam is going to get better with True Heart. Karen, I send out to just die. Let's go ahead and do it. It's kind of uh, kind of lame, but I'm intrigued by it. Just because this is a better trade. He might have the abusive, of, of course, but uh, this I want this to die anyway. Grom's going to be removal soon, so we'll probably not need Shield Slams, especially four damage Shield Slams as much. Ah, nice. Oh, even better. He missed the trade. Cool. Looks like Karen is the turn to me. Um, I don't think I'm going to leave. I think I'm going to leave the knife juggler up. Uh, it's always risky, right? Because it can just do insane damage. But if he summons a ton of dudes to make the knife juggler good, like I've got the punish. So, okay with that. Oh, I'm surprised he didn't try to hit that knife first. It's unusual. Here he goes. Go ahead and play another. No, that's not so good. I mean, double revenge is a possibility, but doesn't feel great, does it? God, those knives are not hitting my minions at all. Revenge is looking better. Oh my god, he's not hitting anything! Oh my gosh, uh, that was actually important. I am going to double revenge now. Um, oh no! I was going to double revenge trade and it was 8 damage. So Thank God we got the brawl, so we'll just brawl instead. I mean, that's fine. <laughs> but that hitting the blood of hitting the sea giant would have ruined my play. I wouldn't have been able to kill the sea giant. It would have been an 8-1. Oh wow, Cairn won the brawl. 
I would have rathered my 2 2 one probably, because I would have got the second half of Karen back to have more power on board, but yeah, he just used everything he had into a brawl and we destroyed, so. No worries. Um, gosh, I. I think that's going to do it for being the Nazoth control warrior by Fibonacci. I'm a little sad about it because um, it's it's doing well and it's fun to play. But uh, I think we got a great demonstration of what the deck's all about, particularly because we literally played through every single card in the list in that Shaman game. We shut out a couple zoos. We had a crazy gold monkey. Like This was a perfect example of what this deck is all about. And... If you've got the dust or these cards to play this deck, it seems to work particularly well against um, aggressive and mid-range decks. Uh, we didn't really get a toe-to-toe -to -toe control battle, but it has those answers, as I mentioned before, with like Tink Master and, of course, Elise can generate so much late game value. Uh, the, the, your weaker cards like you know Revenge and Slam and all that stuff, even in late game, if you don't get to utilize those, can turn into Death Wings and crazy cards like that. So go ahead and give the Nazoth Control Warrior by Fibonacci a shot. Uh, I rate it an A-plus deck. Tons of fun. Pretty cool. That's going to do it for me. If you have any questions about this deck, you know where to leave them. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time, game on.